One of the primary reasons why we have governments is to protect the rights of individuals. And in the era of data and technology, that puts new demands on governments when it comes to controlling the information, the increasing amounts of information that they have about people's lives and how they go about their business every day. So what I think we need is a new understanding of how governments can protect the rights of individuals, but also use that data to benefit them, to deliver the right services and to make sure that they get the things that they need from governments. So the idea of a, social, of a new social contract is to say, how can governments do what they've always needed to do and protect the rights of individuals, but in this very different context of data and technologies? Governments are made by people. So the first thing that we need is to understand what it is that people want and to get people to tell governments what it is that they want. Governments are not outside of society, governments are of society. So the first thing is much more is data literacy, understanding, confidence by people in having the confidence to define what they want and then to expect it and demand it through the ballot box and through advocacy and so on. There's a million great things that can be done with data, but ultimately doing any of them depend on public confidence and public trust and government having the permission from the public to do that. And that, I think, it's the trust and it's the institutions that can underpin and guarantee that trust, which at the moment are sadly lacking. We do have examples of where governments have used or are expecting to use data um, to abuse people's human rights. So there are many fears among citizens of some of the most repressive governments in the world that, they, um, that data may be used to harm them. And that is undermining the the sort of project of data in itself. There are people, for example, who don't, there are whole groups of people who don't wish to be counted in the census, for example, because they don't want to be visible to governments. And ultimately, that may be a short-term strategy for them to protect their rights, but in the longer term, that means that they will be invisible to governments, that if a good government came along, it wouldn't know they were there. So a government wouldn't build a road or a hospital for people that it doesn't know exist. So, you know, ultimately we need everybody to have the confidence to put themselves in the data so that the benefits can be realised. But of course, the onus is on governments to, to build people's trust. The precedent is that governments have managed to control technologies. You know, think about health technology. We have huge benefits to society from health technologies, but they're very, very closely regulated. You know, you can't have a startup that goes that gets on the street and starts handing out antibiotics to people. You know, governments don't allow that. So we, you know, that's what we have to protect us. We've created governments to protect us and we have to hope and expect that they can do their job in this, in this era. They haven't tried yet, so let's hope they can. If it turns out they can't, well, then we'll have to think of something else. But we haven't got, you know, governments are our plan A and we haven't really tried that yet.